thank you, Father. I thank you that your Holy Spirit can do so much for us. You lead us through your Holy Spirit. You guide us. You correct us. You comfort us, Lord. And you do. You give us peace and joy that surpasses all understanding. And I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient and that your Holy Spirit will continue to be with us as these days get harder and darker in different ways. I thank you, Lord, that you're active. You're active in our lives, Lord. You allow us to come to you and speak to you and pray to you and seek you. You call to us from deep places, Lord. And you're faithful to, to let us find you there. And I thank you, Lord, that as, <laughs> as we find you in those deeper places, Lord, you go even deeper and you call us to even deeper places of trust and intimacy and Lord, we know that it's impossible to please you without faith. And so we just pray for the faith to trust your holy word. We pray for the faith to, to know that we will, we will find you in those deeper places, Lord, and that your grace is sufficient, and Lord, that we're more than conquerors through you. I pray for your anointing this morning to bring this message, Lord, and just bind any demon that would prevent your children from hearing the truth in your word. I pray, Lord, that this word would edify us today and just begin to, that it would be a seed of, of hope and courage, Lord, that when days darker than the world has ever seen before or were ever or will ever know are upon us and the hearts of men are failing we pray Lord that your church your true remnant we would have peace and we would have joy and we would have courage and we would greet each day and the challenges of each day with great enthusiasm and that it would be a testimony testimony to your goodness, to your might and your power, that you are the one true God. So help us to shine light in dark places, Lord. Help our lives to be light on a hill. Please be with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. Give me just a moment. So we continue. <clears throat> the great I am's good creation. I only get a couple more times to do that, so I gotta gotta really dig in there, go deeper, right? Uh, part thirteen. Coincidentally, the alien deception. Coincidentally, right? I didn't plan it. Part 13 on 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the alien deception. Here we, here we are once again. We're going to begin with our creation series intro. Y'all ready? We only get to enjoy this a couple more times, okay? So really just, I think we've gotten our money's worth out of it already, but here we go.
All right, here we are. Great I Am's Good Creation Series. So, we're already putting a check mark on the biblical enclosed cosmology, which is flat with a solid dome barrier on the top. And we've put a big red X on the globe that we all believed. Every one of us believed it. We know, we know all of the points that somebody would say and why, you know. But we've gone through them, and now they're wrong. They're just wrong, okay? So part of why we've gone through this is just that it's true, and we're supposed to love truth and explore truth and study to show ourselves approved. <coughs> part of it is that it can be a witnessing tool to point people to the reality that God's word is true, right? So... Some people don't care as much about this, uh, this topic, but for other people, it literally, there are some atheists that have had a problem with the Bible, and then once they realize that the model on the left is true and that the Bible has said that all along, it opens their heart to be able to receive the gospel. So it's important to, to do that. It's also important to understand the truth of these. So maybe you're not mailing off voluntary donations to NASA. I don't know. Buying their shirts and wearing them around and spreading curses. Right? Adding your agreement to that which is false. Which is placing a spell on other people. So don't, don't, you don't want that fruit. But there's another big reason why we've gone through all of this. Part of it is, is, you know, we've gone through all this to, under, to believe the Bible with greater faith, to understand the truth of where we live so that we can juggle. If you want to go all the way back to the beginning. And to understand our assignments and how to actually complete them. We have to understand what, what is true about the world that we live in and how the physics actually work. All of that's true. And we went through a long teaching last week, didn't we? On physical health, performance and utility, germ theory sickness and healing, all of this is good. And so all of those benefits, I believe, are true. But there's another really big reason why we want to understand that the model on the left, the, the flat enclosed cosmology with a solid firmament dome that is impenetrable, right? Let's not forget that part of it. And if anybody didn't Watch the entire teaching specifically on the firmament. There's a whole teaching just on the firmament. Might be worth a, a, a refresher because regardless of the, whether it was flat or round, there's this firmament thing that is impenetrable. That means there ain't no aliens coming from no galaxies far away. Right? So we have established all of this for all of those many reasons that I described already. And to go ahead and prepare ourselves for what's coming in the end days. And, you know, I've several times have kind of danced around the whole the aliens thing and is it a psyop and who knows. You know what? I kind of got to repent over, over that weak language. Because it's not just that we're seeing news stories. It's pretty plain in the word of God. And I've, I've, I'm aware of that. And I've kind of, but as I was preparing this for y'all, I realized I'm like, you know what? This is what's coming. It is what's coming. It is. And we're going to go through the scriptures on it too. So, you know, a combination of what we see in society and the programming and the narrative that's on all of the major platforms corroborating with the word of God. This is what's coming upon us. There is an alien deception. That's all we're all it's it's already happened. It's already started. It's been going for a long time, but there's going to be a crescendo. It's going to increase in intensity there's going to be a whole lot more to it they've just been building it up laying the foundation putting the pieces into place mind controlling generations so that it's not a fresh idea right so that generations are now passing down this lie of oh 
aliens, right? So that the spell is even more powerful, so even more people are deceived by this. So we're going to break it all down today, Lord willing. And then next week, Lord willing, we'll go through the, the destruction of this creation. Y'all ready? Let's do it. All right, so before we can really get into it, though, y'all, I do have a confession. I do. As, as your pastor, I have to come clean about something. I am actually an astronaut. I'm not only an astronaut, I am the most successful and accomplished astronaut of all times. And I have proof of aliens, so I have to give it to you. I have to give you the proof of aliens. Are you ready for it, for my full confession? I'm going to give it to you, whether you're ready for it or not. Hopefully you'll forgive me.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining and celebrating my, my great achievement there, <laughs> for tolerating your strange pastor on Sunday mornings. <laughs> I thought it was pretty legit. I don't know about y'all, but it looked real to me. It really did. So, there you have it, proof of aliens. I want my autograph after <laughs> after service. <laughs> Get a selfie. We can do that. So um, I actually do have actual real experience with aliens and UFOs. So just I'll give you a couple. It's, it won't take long. I've encountered a little gray on two different occasions. One was out in Georgia and one was out here um, right after I moved out here. And the first time was... Um, kind of towards the end of that big season that I've told y'all about several times where the Lord gave me open vision into the spirit world where I could see demons attacking me and witches astral projecting and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And, you know, I was fighting for my life, but the Lord let me, let me see what was happening. And kind of towards the, it was interesting that it was kind of towards the end of that season um, when things started to kind of quiet down, at least from a being able to see it standpoint that I woke up in the middle of the night and here's this little dude right beside my bed. But you know what I did? Just like I had been doing for months before that to all of these other demons. Remember I gave him the finger of God. <laughs> I pointed at him. I said, I bind you in Jesus name and I command you to leave. Whew. He just faded off into the distance and he was gone. All right. So. I'm going to go through the different types of aliens that people report seeing. That, that's the only one I've ever seen. The other one that I saw was just like him, and it was out here in northwest Arkansas right after we moved. The same thing. I rebuked him in Jesus' name, and he had to fade away. Right? But so what people are encountering are spirits. And then with any demonic spirit, if you have fear, it's like they feed on it, and it gives them permission to hang out and to become emboldened to do more stuff to you. So everyone gets, has these, you know, there's been reports for 50 years about alien abductions and them doing weird experiments to your reproductive organs and stuff like that. You've allowed them to do that if that happens through either fear or permission or some weird spirit of lust or something. You've given permission for those things to happen because if you rebuke them, they have to leave. Now, I do believe that there are other physical beings as well, and we're going to go through that list. So that's my experience with, with aliens, with two little, two little grays. I'm on record. It's recorded, and I'm putting it out there. I've seen aliens, but they're demons, and I rebuke them, and they go away. So if one ever comes up to you, children, remember this. You have authority over unclean spirits as well. So if you're ever attacked, even if it's in a dream, you tell them, I bind you in Jesus' name. You don't have permission to be here. Leave. And they will leave you alone. They have to. And if it doesn't work the first time, say it again. And then say it again until they leave. Okay? okay. All right. So then uh, my experience with a UFO or a UAP. So they're technically the same thing. I don't know why. They're just like rebranding. I guess to give it like a, a fresh feel or whatever, but unidentified flying object or a, uh, what's it called? A unidentified aerial phenomenon is the UAP. So I was at home at our beautiful estate in Georgia and um, Tiffany was actually traveling with her mother. So I was there at the house by myself. So unfortunately I don't have an, another witness, which is how these redneck experiences tend to, <laughs> tend to be recorded, right? You know? I was outside and yeah, you know, um, but so I'm, I'm in the house and I'm looking out over our field. We had a pretty field that I would look out over sometimes. And um, I off in the distance, I noticed this little light that kind of raised up. And then I noticed like seven more that popped up off in the distance. And I'm thinking, is this like uh, somebody's having a party and they all have their drones out? Like what's going on? And then from there, they all started kind of going off in different, different directions. And one of them started coming closer. And as it got closer, I could see that it was actually quite large. You know, I don't know how to, to accurately you know, say exactly how large I, th I, I think that it was. I, I'm going to estimate about 
20 feet wide by maybe 40 feet tall. And what I saw was, all, the only way I know how to describe it was it looked like an upside down spinning glowing lasso. Like if somebody was doing a lasso, mm -hmm. but it was up. So the skinny part was down here and it was doing like this. And it was glowing like this glowing energy thing, but it was going real fast. And I'm watching it. And it looked like maybe all of a sudden it realized I was watching it because then as it was going slowly, it like stopped and then it came towards my house like quickly. <laughs> I'm, going, <laughs> I'm not going to say what I said at the time because I wasn't a pastor then. So I got away from the window. I'm like, whatever this thing is, standing next to the window can't be wise, right? And um, now I stay strapped. So I had, a, I had a 45 on me. So I just, <laughs> like, if you're coming through the window, you're going to have a fight. You know, I'm like, I can't run from this thing. What's it? What am I going to run from this? How am I going to run from this? So I'm just, you're going to either have to zap me out of existence and, you know, whatever. And so it, it came directly above the house and I could feel it. It's like what I, what I think happened in that moment is that they did some sort of a, like a, a 3D scan of my whole house. Because I could feel it. It was like, and it came back up. So like, I feel like it was like scanning my house to see like what's in the house. Who's here? You know, or they were just interested. And I'm still just like standing there with the 45. Like what's going to happen next? I don't know. And uh, I could hear it sounded like and I'm going to show you in scripture, it sounded like uh, rushing waters. It sounded like a, 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 a turbine engine of sorts, but it was this high pitched, but it, it sounded like effortless. It was like this high, just like a, like I, I can't even do it. I can't even do it. But it was like a, a jet engine is what it sounded like, but cleaner and more powerful than a jet engine and quieter. And then all of a sudden it went <laughs> and took, and I could hear it. It went straight up and it was gone. So that's my experience. That's my experience. I'm on record. Pastor Jonathan has seen a UFO and not the only one, right? We're all, we're seeing more and more official reports in respected places from respected people now. So there's like an increase of this activity that's happening now. Curiously, too, I believe these things are related, that in that place, so, I mean, we're going to talk about DOMS, deep underground military bases. We'll talk about that a little bit today. Um, I believe that there's one underneath where I lived in Loganville, because if I went into the basement and, s like, slept in there when the house is quiet, <coughs> I swear I could hear underneath the ground it sounded like heavy machinery moving and like stuff is happening like i don't know what but stuff is happening so could that be the united states government sure we could have some fancy little t toys you know but something's over there and i hear something under the ground and then here come a bunch of little <laughs> for what i don't know I don't know, so that people would see him and talk about him and begin to perpetuate the aliens are real thing, right? So maybe that's why they're starting to show themselves more and more is that they're trying to condition us. They've been conditioning us, like I said, for more than a couple of generations to believe that these things are real. And now we're starting to see more and more signs and wonders in this guy, right? But are we understanding the truth of what these things are? Are we being told the truth of what they are, or is it a deception? So we're going to go through the scriptures on it, and we're also going to show you, you know, where we're seeing this showing up in popular culture and even in the news and our military and Congress is all talking about this stuff. So this is not just crazy conspiracy theory stuff anymore. It's mainstream. Like, it's actually... It's flipped now. It used to be that conspiracy theorists believed in aliens. And now if you don't believe in aliens, now you're the conspiracy theorist because you don't believe in aliens, right? So funny how that works, <laughs> full circle. But I guess I'm on the cutting edge. <laughs> uh, the alien deception. So here we are. So what is an alien? A 
uh, belonging to a foreign country or nation, okay? It's just the definition. Relating to or denoting beings supposedly from other worlds and extraterrestrial. So these are words that we've heard for, for forever. So is it possible that there are beings which are, they belong to a foreign nation? Yeah. Is it possible that they have DNA which is different than ours? Yeah. Did they come from billions of light years away? No, because there's a firmament. A firmament. Okay? Firmament. <laughs> like, there's a firmament, y'all, so they didn't come from no f far away, right? So what is an extraterrestrial of or from outside of the Earth or its atmosphere? Which, again, we've gone through this whole series. So if somebody's jumping on this, this one because they're like, hey, there's a weird church that's talking about aliens. Okay, if you've shown up and you've caught this, you got to go back and watch the rest of this series, especially the one on the firmament, to understand why what we're being told about these things cannot be true. Like, cannot. Cannot be true. So, anyway, hypothetical or fictional being. Yeah, now there may be some real beings, but we're being deceived and lied to. So, there's some fiction involved for sure. <coughs> so we know the truth. We've explored this in what many people would consider painful detail. Right? And what some other people would probably say, you've done a poor job and there's easily two to four times more information that you could have presented. But we're already knowing. We're putting a green check on what we know is true from Scripture and from observations in the real world and an honest understanding of physics, okay? So you can't lie to us. You can't deceive us about billions of galaxies and all that stuff. It's just, it doesn't work anymore, you know? And that's one of the biggest reasons. So sure, there's a lot of people that whatever, they're, they're already saved. It's not a huge deal for them. Why would you talk about this? Why does it matter? It's because of, it's because one huge thing is because of what's about to go down, it's about to go down, y'all. It's about to go down. And when it goes down, and we know they ain't come from no billions of light years away, and we know the reality of what they are, and we understand the reality of go back to like as much as I love this whole series on the great I am's good creation in the physical world. Remember how we've said, yes, there's still value in this, but that physical things have little value, right? So as big as, as important as this entire series is, it has little value. What has more value? The spirit world series that we went through. And we talked about spiritual authority. And then eventually, of course, what's most important is the spiritual eternity aspect. And we'll talk about that some next week. But understanding, truly understanding spiritual authority and being able to truly operate from a place of true spiritual authority because you're repenting of your sins, because you're believing the whole counsel, it means that when these wicked creatures show up, you will be part of the remnant who actually has authority over them and actually defeats them in battle if you're so inclined. And I'm going to suggest that you should be so inclined. And that it is delights the Lord. And if you think that it's weird to talk about overcoming wickedness in battle, then go back and review our little mini-series on the man of war. And we're reminded powerfully that the Lord is a man of war. Right? And war is coming upon us. Such that if those days were not shortened, no flesh would survive. So what are you going to do? You're going to lay down? Are you going to lay down or will you fight? And if you fight, are you going to be fighting from a place of operational effectiveness? Because the only way I'm going to show you, the only way you're going to have any operational effectiveness in the war that's coming is to have the anointing of the Most High. Because we don't have it. We don't have it on our own. So we know the truth. You can't mess with us. Why would they lie? All right, so I'm going to give you a few scriptures. Matthew 24, 37. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
We've gone through a lot of this, so I, I shouldn't have to unpack these because these have been explored in pretty good detail in the series. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same who, the giants, became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. All right? So as it was in the days of Noah, where these mighty giants were the men of renown, we discussed how they were actually in charge of things. So when we see paintings on um, pyramids that show the Pharaoh being like this and then all the regular people being like this, it wasn't just a depiction of their great uh, stature in terms of their influence. It could literally have been and probably was literally a two-scale drawing of those who were in charge of the, the humans. And that in the end days, it's going to be just like that. Second Thessalonians 2, 8 through 12. Then shall the, that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose, comings, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So they believe not the truth, which is God's word, and so God is allowing a strong delusion to come over the world and that the people that don't truly love truth, like all of it, and believing that it's real, people even that call themselves Christians are going to believe a lie. And what is this lie? I mean, we see even in this passage, and we've got more of them, that the working of Satan with power and signs and lying wonders and we're going to see that it's stuff that's in the air. That people are going to believe lies about things that they see in the sky. And that Satan's behind it, but God's allowing it. And that those who don't truly love truth are going to believe those lies. And so we already have people that believe in aliens, like believe it with sincerity and do not believe in the Bible, right? It's like a, a, a big thing. So why would they lie? Because they're trying to set this up. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels, angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12, 9. What else? What else has deceived the whole world? It's not even the alien thing. It is the, the flat earth thing. Because every single person that believes in flat earth first believed in the ball because we were taught that lie. And there's a whole massive chunk of people that ain't never going to believe in an alien from another planet. So this deception is already here and has been here, but it's, it's been perpetuated for several reasons to, to, cause people to doubt the word of God, to remove people from beginning to seek a relationship with the Lord, from submitting to his lordship, from repenting of their sins, and from being saved, obviously, but also to establish the return of the Nephilim. And we're going to see it in scripture. It's, it's coming. Why would they lie? Because they are of their father, the devil. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Why would they lie? Because that's what liars do. They just be lying. <laughs> I knew a dude, and man, I loved him. Bless his heart. He would lie about everything. He would lie about the most inconsequential things. Hey, man. What's going on? Oh, yeah, I just got back from lunch. All right, cool. What'd you have? Oh, yeah, I had Subway. But come to find out, he really had Chick-fil-A. Like, nobody cared. He just lied about the most random of things. Just, I don't know why. Liars lie. Just liars lie sometimes. 
even when they don't get anything out of it. Like, <laughs> liars are weird, man, and liars have their own place in the lake of fire. So, you know, don't be lying. Matthew 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Why would they lie? They're trying to deceive God's chosen people. And many of them are deceived and will continue to be deceived. So it's tragic. It, it doesn't have to be like that, don't I? You know, love the truth. Study to show yourself approved. Go back and actually take the time to review some crazy pastor's creation series. Study it and pray about it. This is a thing you can do. If you can think you might be lukewarm, you just might be. Here's your sign. All right, Luke 21, 25 through 26. There should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So even Christians, if they believe the ball and they believe aliens and then aliens show up, they're going to be scared. They're going to be terrified and their hearts are going to fail them for fear. That's part of why they've done all of this lie for hundreds of years thing. They're trying to kill some people through heart failure is one thing because they know scripture. Like, yeah, they're going to be afraid. Let's do it. And then also the power that they hope to gain through this deception because they're establishing and it will be established. I'm going to show you there's going to be an establishment of of the of their return and that's a piece that i think is missing a lot from this conversation but i, I believe that it's clear in scripture so i'm going to show that to you and i've had a, a vision of it why would they lie because one creates fear and sets the stage for the end the fulfillment of prophecy prophecy will be fulfilled and apparently this is how it's going down all right so we're going to go through some alien encounters and obviously we see, we've seen it, I can't, it'd be impossible for me to try to list every instance of where aliens shows up in uh, media and programming, going back over 100 years now. But, <laughs> if y'all, I'm sure some of y'all have heard about Orson Welles and the War of the Worlds. It was a 1938 radio drama. A and they, they had this skit where they acted like aliens invaded and started killing people. <laughs> and people were terrified. Like, they believed it. They believed it sincerely. And were trying to sue the radio station and trying to impose, like, a ban, like limits to free speech and stuff over it. Like, it was a major controversy. In 1938, the Martian invasion <laughs> caused widespread panic. People will just believe whatever they see and apparently whatever they hear that's coming from one of these little electronic things. I seen it on the, I heard it on the, and they just believe it. So this, these are some powerful tools that are being used against us. There's uh, reports of alien sightings and abductions. So the first UFO sighting we think was in 1947, which is crazy because there was a lot of stuff that went down in 1947. Uh, but reports of abductions began around the same time and have continued. You can look up Project Blue Book uh, from 1952 to 1969 where they were investigating UFO sightings. Area 51 in Nevada, there's a ton of sightings that were in the 50s and 60s. Look up FBI document. 6751. I think I even got it for you. I don't remember because y'all, I got, I, I, don't, I don't get, I don't get sleep. So I don't really know. We're just going slide by slide and seeing what comes next. Okay. If I'm being real, <laughs> this is, at least, you know, you get what you, you get what you see. Like I, I did not rehearse this. <laughs> like most churches, you can tell that the dude has like literally memorized his sermon like it's a play. That's despicable, in my opinion. Anyway, so I think I'm going to show you 6751. Sleep paralysis, shadow people, and little grays. So 
I was never aware that people consider the shadow people thing to be part of the UFO uh, phenomenon. So interestingly, what kicked off that whole season of me seeing into the spirit was I woke up and I was surrounded by shadow people and they were pulling me down and it felt like they were trying to pull me down through the bed into the abyss below. There was like four of them on each side of me and they had their hands on me and they were pulling me down. And I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. But I knew that I didn't like that. So I stood up and it made me angry. I'm like, <laughs> what are these things that are trying to hold me? So A, at least praise the Lord, I had a warrior spirit and was willing to fight. And I wasn't afraid. So I, they, it, bam, they didn't have power to hold me down anymore because I wasn't afraid. I was like, well, this is not okay, so I'm going to go turn the light on. So I stood up, turned the light on, and I just started to say in the name of Jesus. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's all I knew to do. I just knew there was power in the name of Jesus, so I just said his name. And they left me alone and never came back again. But that was what kicked off that whole like year, year and a half long season of me seeing stuff in, in the spirit realm. And... I talked to a guy uh, about it. He's like, oh yeah, that's shadow people. Like he was familiar with it. But you know, it wasn't until I was digging into all this that I saw that apparently it's a, it's a thing that's quite common that people are associating with alien encounters. So they, they think that it's like aliens, and, but we're only b able to see just their shadow or something like that. So it's a, it's a demon and they have to leave in Jesus' name as well, okay? Sleep paralysis. Y'all, don't let no s nothing terrify you into where you can't move. Squeak out, Jesus. Whatever it takes. I don't accept this sleep paralysis. But if you tell yourself, I can't move, boom, you just gave the spell more power. You just gave the demons more power. I can move in Jesus' name. And then you pop up, right? So, but these are all common experiences that people report. And they associate them with alien encounters, which really they're just demonic. So there's been, of course, reports of tests and experimentation on kidnappees that they're actually somehow able to abduct people and take them and take them away and mess with their reproductive organs. And all of that, if any of that's actually happening, it's because they gave in either through, like I said, either just they were just curious and wanted to see where it would go through some weird spirit of lust or through fear. But if you resist, they can't take you anywhere against your will, but you have to resist. So I was interested to hear this. Uh, allegedly, who knows, five to 6% of the population has reported some sort of interaction with aliens or an a, even an a, attempted abduction. That's pretty strong numbers. Now, again, don't ask me where I got that. Somewhere on the internet. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed legit, so I put it on here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, apparently, also, there is a higher statistical likelihood of interaction with aliens among military families and around military bases. Like a strong correlation. Wonder why. So, of course, obviously, in Hollywood, there's countless movies and shows, the Coneheads, Predator, Alien, Close Encounters, Contact, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, music artists like Katy Perry has a song called Alien. You know, <laughs> it's a disgusting video. Don't watch it. But they are trying to cultivate the minds of young people to desire intimacy with these beings. And then she got her big head hairdo. <laughs> Ladies, y'all might need to repent over your hairdo. <laughs> Trying to pretend like you got a big head when you don't. Um, but yeah, they got big heads. Some of them have big heads. So they've conditioned us. And it starts with, so one way that they try to like introduce something into society to begin to get us to be okay with it is first to laugh at it. You know, let's, let's mock in mash let's mock the cross dresser and it's just something to laugh at and the more that you laugh at it the more comfortable you become with it until you begin to accept it and it become begins to be normalized right but it begins with like a laughter so like we got the cone heads 
to begin to say, oh, look how silly they look with their big heads. So that the more times you see entities with large heads, you begin to accept that it's normal. They're trying to normalize things. And obviously, in the news, military and Congress, we hear about alien encounters. And I'm going to share a couple of videos um, that break that down for you, too. Oh, here it is. FBI document 6751. All right, so this is from March 22nd, 1950. An investigator for the Air Force stated that three so-called flying saucers had been recovered in New Mexico. They were described as being circular in shape with raised centers approximately 50 feet in diameter. Each one was occupied by three bodies of human shape, but only three feet tall. Dressed in metallic cloth of a very fine texture, each body was bandaged in a manner similar to to the blackout suit used by speed flyers and test pilots. Okay. Whether that happened or not, they've released this document with the Freedom of Information Act so that people will see this and be like, see, look, evidence. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. Regardless, the message is, because if you really think that Freedom of Information Act is somehow like if there's something they really don't want us to see that we can just get it just because of Freedom of Information. No. Everything that we see through Freedom of Information Act is still, they're okay with us seeing it or they redact parts of it, right? So the fact that this is available is because they want us to know this information because they're trying to, to strengthen the narrative that these things exist and they may but again, what are they and where did they come from? That's a very different answer. If you ask somebody like me or you ask you know, a, uh, an alien enthusiast. And you can't see it, but I, I highlighted it there that this came from FBI.gov. Like it's, it's legit from their page. All right, so here's some different types of aliens. And I don't know, like I said, I've only seen one type. But this is, these are some of what we are told by some people that say they've looked into it a whole lot more than me and people's testimonies of entities that they have interacted with. It's, there are reports of up to 14 different classes of aliens. You have your greys, little green men, predators, reptilians, giants and chimera, the Plejaren slash Venusians slash Agarthans slash Nordic aliens and really any non-human beings are considered technically an alien. So why do, why do I share this? A, is we're teaching on aliens, so we're going to talk about it. The one that I've seen looks the most like this silver dude in the middle. So that one I know is a demonic spirit. Now, the green goblin dude looks very similar to this. So maybe this spirit gets to inhabit a body that looks like this. That might be true. But that there are also allegedly, you know, they put these pictures in movies for a reason. And that there are reptilians. But part of why I wanted to share this is that it is accep widely accepted in the, U and I have not. Now, as much of a conspiracy theory guy as I've always been, I was never into aliens. I just wasn't. Interestingly, eh, whatever, we'll find out, right? But accepted within that community is this Plejaren, Venusian, Agarthan, Nordic version, okay? Which is supposed to be that they look like us, they're just a little bit taller, and they're beautiful. But they're still considered to be aliens. So why am I bringing this up? Well, if some ugly ones show up and start eating people and then the beautiful ones show up to save the day and then now they're normalized in society. Maybe that's, maybe that's, the, maybe that's the play. Maybe the fallen angels, which was Lucifer considered beautiful? Beautiful, right? Maybe his offspring are actually beautiful 
We spend all kinds of time, and this dude might be handsome underneath all that. He might have some rock-hard abs that we've all been conditioned to desire, right? So why do we see in society a specific small nose, fair skin, blue eyes, blonde hair as like for the longest time was promoted as what was considered the most desirable. Like all of the models looked like these Nordic beings, right? Is it because we've been conditioned to desire them? It's possible. It's possible. So I don't know. I'm not speaking from a place of authority, but I am planting the seed. Remember this. If we come under alien attack and Ugly ones start eating people and beautiful ones show up and they save the day and now they're here. And then they tell us, oh, and by the way, yes, we planted you. You are our seed. There is no God. We gave you the Bible so that you wouldn't kill each other. But we're back now and we're going to help you. And here's all this technology to help us move into the golden age. Don't believe their lies. They're still Satan's seed. They're still an abomination. Okay? That's my point with all this. So, you know, you hear some people when they start talking about this, and even I, I had the slide that said aliens are demons. Are aliens really just demons? Well, I gave you the, my story of being able to rebuke one and it just faded away into existence, so that was a demon for sure. Let's look at, does anybody know who Aleister Crowley is? So an occultist, a wicked man. I'm not going to you know, go through his resume or anything like that, but created f- several cults. And there are people that still follow his teachings to this day. He wrote several books. And um, he has admitted, it's like, it's not a, not a conspiracy theory. It's not a, oh, just the Christians believe. No, he admits and celebrates the fact that many of his books he claims did not come from him, that they were di- uh, dictated directly to him specifically by demons. And he did occultic ceremonies to summon them, to get them to speak to him, to write these books. And this picture is a picture that he drew of one of these demons. He drew this in 1918. He was doing some occultic ceremonies to summon this demon. And this is what he said it looked like. The demon lamb. So we rebuke lamb and all his kinfolk. An interesting quote from Aleister Crowley. I guess he identified himself as a prophet. Maybe he had some prophetic tendencies because he said, today they call them angels and demons. Tomorrow they will call them something else. Maybe aliens. All right, so are aliens really just demons? So I've already mentioned that, yes, I believe that there's a demonic aspect to them. But I do believe, and I believe we will see it in Scripture too, that there are physical entities. So what are these physical entities? Well, there's physical stuff, right? And we know from our spiritual, from our deliverance teaching, that spirits can inhabit a body, and that the body is controlled by the spirit. And so is it possible for a demonic spirit to indwell a physical being? Yes. And so basically any physical being could be an avatar or basically just a vessel that a demonic spirit is controlling. And that can look like a person or it can look like one of these hideous little things. Or it can be an animal. Or it can be a hybrid Right? That season that I went through where I saw demonic spirits, m- the majority of them, they looked like weird crosses between different types of animals and people. Maybe those are the, dis- the disembodied spirits from the flood. That's why there's so many of them. So yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. There are some that are just straight spirits and some, if they show up looking like that, we'll know that a demonic spirit is controlling them. So can we necessarily control the body of these things? No, you still have to have, you can't control their body with your, your words. You can bind the spirit though. And then what we see with the example of King David, then you still have to step forward and do something physically, but you've taken away their special power when you bind the spirit. So if they're not coming from other planets, where are they coming from? Underground. There are 
testimonies of people that have gone into the deep underground military bases and interact with them. There's also some speculation that they are set up quite comfortably in Antarctica. I don't know. Have I been to Antarctica? I have not. I have not. <laughs> I did go to Saturn and Uranus, though. <laughs> Can't take that away. I've got, <laughs> I got evidence. Uh, aliens. All right. So got a, just a couple of minutes of a uh, couple of videos for us to see aliens showing up. F the official narrative, because again, this is no longer considered conspiracy theory. This is what we're being told is true from the sources that we're supposed to trust. All right. Let's see what they got to say. Have you ever looked up and wondered, is there anybody else out there? Last night, we brought you a story out of Vegas that made us even more curious. When responding to a 911 call in late April, police body cam footage picked up this strange object falling from the sky. Neither cops or eyewitnesses had any idea what the little green flashing triangle was. But it's not just what people saw, it's also what they heard. Listen to this audio picked up by a witness. It says this came from a neighborhood ring doorbell cam. What was that? And now listen to this eyewitness explain what happened next. I hear something fall from the sky. I turn around. The only thing I, I see is a big light falling from the sky. And moments after, I feel a big impact and a, and a bang, sort of like a big impact. It was sort of like a shock wave, like an out-of-body experience. So to say, when I tried to look at the object, it was all blurry, not my vision, but only the backyard area. And I hear thousands of footsteps around me. So it wasn't just footsteps he heard. This kid says he witnessed an alien invasion. The only thing I can see in the backyard is a tall creature, probably around eight, 10 feet tall, very thin. He was a gray greenish color. And when I looked at it in the eyes, my body just froze. He has a weird looking feet and a big face and eyes and you can see a big mouth and and i i could hear his loud deep breathing and i could see his stomach moving he would just stare at me seconds later i could start moving again did aliens touch down in vegas or are we getting pumped now this incident is fresh off the heels of what we reported last night several whistleblowers have contacted michael schellenberger saying that the u.s government's in possession of 12 alien spacecrafts, 12. Aliens. Mexican aliens, there's been a major development. Trace Gallagher, anchor of Fox News at night, has the latest, Trace. Jesse, these two mummified bodies are called Clara and Mauricio, and some Mexican doctors say all the evidence points to them being from a different world. The bodies were unearthed in Peru back in 2017 and have been studied by numerous doctors and UFO experts. But a Mexican doctor named Jose Zalce Benitez says, quoting here, I can confirm that these bodies have no relation to human beings. Now, Dr. Benitez went on to say these bodies were not assembled or manipulated and that one of the bodies was actually gestating, possibly even carrying eggs at the time of death, and he believes that each of the bodies is made of a single skeleton. Now, that's important because a lot of other scientists and experts, including some from the U.S., believe the Mexican doctors and the UFO enthusiasts are wrong and that the bodies are made up of a combination of human and animal parts. And they also say that testing proves that some of the mummified parts didn't even die at the same time. Both sides agree the bodies were not recovered from some UFO crash site. In fact, the Mexican researchers say they were found in algae mines and subsequently became fossilized. But this whole back and forth is coming at a very unique time where a list of countries are trying to lift the veil on the history of unidentified phenomena. And the last thing UFO experts want is to get caught up in phony information. We should note that Mexican politicians are considering passing a law that would make Mexico the first country in the world to acknowledge the presence of aliens on the planet. And many of those Mexican lawmakers found that Clara and Mauricio, the mummified bodies, were very compelling evidence, Jesse.
Clara and okay, so it is the age-old questions. Do aliens exist? Our next guest says we may know that answer in less than a month because he's found possible evidence of their existence at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Harvard science professor Avi Loeb joins us now with more on his groundbreaking study. Avi, good morning to you. You know, you said that there's a chance these fragments could be artificial. How big of a chance are we talking here? Are you saying 50-50 or more? Thanks for having me. Well, this object was moving very fast, faster than 95% of the stars near the sun. And it also had material strength tougher than all the rocks we had seen over the past decade in the NASA catalog. So uh, there is a chance. I, I wouldn't quantify it. I would just say it's quite possible that it's different than a rock. And what we are doing now is analyzing the composition of uh, the molten droplets that fell off this object when it was exposed to the fireball that it created as it moved through the air. And we are getting some interesting results, but I cannot detail them until we've uh, put them together in a paper, scientific paper that we hope to uh, make publicly available to everyone uh, within a month or so. Military veterans who say they have firsthand accounts of UFOs will testify this morning amid questions over whether the government is hiding extraterrestrial information from the public. Air Force officer David Grush is one of the witnesses. He says he became a whistleblower following concerning reports from multiple esteemed and credentialed current and former military and intel community individuals that the U.S. government is operating with secrecy above congressional oversight with regards to UAPs. UAPs UAPs are what you and I refer to as UFOs. Congressman Tim Burchett is going to be in the hearing today and joins us now. Congressman, let us start with what I call the existential question. By the end of today's hearing, will we know if we are alone in this universe? Well, that's a good question. I, what the committee won't be, we're not going to bring in a UFO or, or a little saucer or a little green man. What we've got is three patriotic Americans who have come forth at, at great risk of their own and their, um, their, their credentials are, 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 are beyond reproach. Um, I, I think we will. I think these, these gentlemen will, will lay out a pretty good case for that. Um, you know, there's a lot of video that's out right now, the Tic Tac video, which is, it's not Tic Tac, it's Tic Tac like the candy. Um, one of the gentlemen that was involved in the filming of that will be there and actually was chasing one of the, one of the, the UFOs in those things. You know, the funny thing is... My name is Ryan Fobbs Graves, and I'm a former F-18 pilot with a decade of service in the U.S. Navy. My name is David Charles Grush. I was an intelligence officer for 14 years, in the, both in the U.S. Air Force at the rank of major and most recently at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. My name is David Fravor. I'm a retired commander in the United States Navy. Now, those three men testified before Congress today, revealing shocking details about what we call UFOs, but the government calls UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Now, for decades, these men served our country with honor, and no one at that bipartisan hearing today called into question their integrity or their credibility. But the testimony, it has to be taken seriously. UAP are in our airspace, but they are grossly underreported. These sightings are not rare or isolated. They are routine. Military aircrew and commercial pilots, trained observers whose lives depend on accurate identification, are frequently witnessing these phenomena. I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. The technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had. You're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants and leave, and there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. They even talked about some of the G-forces that they've seen, which in simplest terms, it's when you feel your body accelerating against gravity. What about G-forces? Let's talk about G-forces of those vehicles. Could a human survive those G-forces with known technology today? No. No, not for the acceleration rates that we observed. And some of the claims were quite literally out of this world. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? Uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. 
Now, what I think everybody wants to know at this point is how has all of this been happening without the public discovering it and without the government being, frankly, totally transparent on what has gone on all these years with all the claims of conspiracy theories? Now we're learning it just now? Well, this exchange does provide a bit of an answer. Do you have knowledge or do you have reason to believe that there are programs in the advanced tech space that are unsanctioned? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. How does a program like that get funded? I will give you generalities. I can get very specific in a closed session, uh, but a mis misappropriation of funds and uh, does that mean that Does that mean that there is money in the budget that is said to go to a program, but it doesn't, and it goes to something else? Yes, I have specific knowledge of that. Yep. Okay. I know the most shocking truth of all of that is that the government could be misappropriating funds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, literally, y'all, I could have continued going for hundreds of hours showing you more and more videos just in the news, different news agencies and interviews and Senate hearings and generals and like it just keeps going. And, um, you know, y'all can thank the Lord that I ran out of, of energy and time <laughs> to pull more in for you, but... Um, it just keeps going. And the point of that is not to even necessarily s to, to give credence to any of it other than to say, here's the narrative. Here's what we are being told is happening. So we can't be surprised if, if we start to actually see some of this stuff. All right. So here's some, of, some more of what I was going to bring in if I had more time for you. So you, again, you can thank the Lord that I didn't have time to, uh, to, to pull all this together for you. But if you care to do some more homework, here's some more stuff that you can find. Nearly every U.S. president talking about aliens, going on talk shows, talking about aliens, and joking about how they can't give you the information. And, you know, even Ronald Reagan talking about how, like, the one thing that would really bring humanity together would be if there was a, an alien attack. And um, U.S. presidents, so there's regular and frequent sightings and reports of unidentifiable aerial phenomena that occur. It's all over all of the social medias. So how much of it is real? I don't know. Some of it maybe, probably. I don't know. But again, the narrative is overwhelming everywhere that you look, even from official sources. You can research Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. You can research the ancient aliens. And again, this is an important one. So... I believe these things are going to show up, and I believe that when they do, whether there's some, because, you know, we're, we're acting like there's going to be a massive war with these things. There might not be, and there might not be 14 different kinds that show up. It might just be that World War III is popping off, and people are killing a third of the world, and that then the beautiful ones show up to try to restore peace. Maybe that's how it goes down. I don't know exactly how it's going to go down. I just know some aliens are going to show up, and that a bunch of people are going to die somehow, right? But I do believe there's been a strong effort to begin laying the, the foundation for a belief that these aliens that have come from some faraway planet came here and planted us and that they are our father and that they are our God. So, and it's, it, it's exhausted ad nauseum in this ancient aliens series, but you, it shows up in a ton of other places too. You can research the Las Vegas incident where there were tall giants walking among us. That was uh, recently, so last year, June two, uh, 2023. But even more recently, in the Miami Mall, there were tall giants walking around. And there was like 250 police officers that showed up. And the official uh, story was that there were some teenagers with sticks. And that's why there was such a police presence, right? But... I think I tend to think it was like some teenage giants that snuck out and they wanted to go to the mall and then they got in trouble and they were grounded after that. Um, I don't know. But anyway, you can check out Bob Lazar and talk and he goes through eyewitness accounts of spacecraft and some of these occultic ceremonies, uh, you know, meditation and stuff that is said to conjure them up. Phil Schneider talks about the deep underground military bases. So, uh, they killed him. He's not around anymore, but there's still some of his, his videos that are um, going around on the internet. You can still find interviews of him. 
and he was uh, worked you know worked with the military and was responsible for I think engineering and stuff like that for some of these underground military bases. And he talks about interacting with giants and aliens and talks about the different kinds of aliens and um, that to to be allowed to go down that low, you have to sign a sworn affidavit saying that you won't speak the name of Jesus Christ around them because they get so worked up and angry over it, apparently. So interesting, interesting interviews. But again, that there are occult rituals of several different people that say that they can conjure up aliens and that they can, aliens come see me when I go into this meditation state. Okay. So there's a lot more that you can research on your own. So here, um, people report summoning aliens through satanic rituals and meditation. Again, back when uh, Jack Parsons was doing the whole Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA's rocket program was launching, they were doing satanic rituals to get information to learn how to do the rockets. Apparently that, what was that alien's name? J-Dude or whatever his name. <laughs> J-Dog. J-Dog the alien. Uh, cell phone technology came out right after that. So maybe they are giving us technology. You can research uh, Project Blue Book for more government information on the UFOs. And then remote viewing is not a conspiracy. You can look up Project Stargate. You can go to CIA.gov and look up documentation about the remote viewing program. They've absolutely been interested in being able to astral project to spy on people. And so they've practiced it and they've They've mastered the technology of astral projection and that aliens apparently show up while they're doing this somewhat frequently. Why is that? Demons, maybe? All right, so all of that is like, okay, whatever, they could just be making stuff up just to mess with us. But is there anything in the Bible that substantiates the, the whole aliens thing? I'll try to, try to cruise through it. The word alien does show up in several places, and I'll give you the definition for it. And there's a couple of verses that I am going to point out. So the first definition of alien is this H1616 ger, which uh, just means a temporary inhabitant, a newcomer lacking inherited rights, an alien, a sojourner, or a stranger. Right? So we're not going to see a definition that says little green man from a, a planet light years far away from here. We don't find that. We do find just a general definition of the, we use the term alien to describe people that are coming to this country that were not born here. Right, so it's it's a, a sojourner, a journeyer, somebody who is lacking inherent rights. Right, because God didn't create them that way; that it was an abomination through genetic manipulation and through the fallen angels and the mixing of seed. So they lack inherent rights to to even be here in this world. But they are a temporary inhabitant. Right, and so we'll see. All of those things can be true, regardless of where they came from. But so this, uh, the Bible does talk about aliens. And there's another word for alien, uh, the H5237, the Nokri, which means strange. Again, foreigner, outlandish, strange. You've got another word for alien, the Nakar, which means foreign, from heathendom. So <laughs> not where you want to live, but alien, strange. It's interesting that there's so many different words for alien. Aliens, plural. There are several instances of aliens in the Bible. And none of those are really pointing to this, this end time event. There's, there's a couple of them that I'm going to show you here in a minute, though. So just showing you where, where it does actually show up, the word alien in the Bible. So the word aliens in the New Testament, because all of the rest of those were, were in the Old Testament. So this is the New Testament. Aliens even shows up in the New Testament. The G526. The Apollo Apollo trio um, to alienate, to be alien, to shut off one's fellowship and intimacy, to estrange. Aliens, another one. Alotrios, so they're hostile. So here's a hostile, a word meaning hostile. Not of one's own family, belonging to another. Not of one's own, so another. All right, and then this was one that I did want to bring in. So Hebrews 11, 32 through 34. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Samson and of Jeph 
Tay, Jephthai, and David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. Wasn't that one of our assignments, to subdue and have dominion? So who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, and turned the f- to flight the armies of the aliens. Now, a couple of things I want to point out here. How did they do this? How did they quench the violence? How did they escape the edge of the sword? How did they become strong in weakness? How were they valiant in flight? And how did they turn to flight the armies of the aliens? Through faith. Right? So that's what's going to give us, if there's any victory that any of us accomplish in fighting aliens, it's going to be through faith. Right? And I did think, so you can say, oh, well, that definition of aliens just means foreigner, somebody who doesn't belong here, somebody who doesn't have right to be here. All of those things still apply to the Nephilim. Those are all still true, right? And even if you look at some of these heroes, there were people that battled giants, literally. So I think it's a pretty, pretty solid verse, but there's more. Have you ever heard the expression strange children? That was kind of weird. And then you see in the Psalms that David was afraid of them. <laughs> like mighty King David was afraid. Uh, Deliver me from the, send thine hand from above. Why doesn't he come from above? I guess because that's where God is. But rid me and deliver, deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children. David, why are you afraid of some children? Psalm 144 and 11. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity and the right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Hosea 5, 7. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord for they have begotten strange children. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. So when we saw that there were people that were willing to interbreed with fallen angels, they begot strange children and it's a treachery that they did it. And then these strange children apparently were a major inconvenience for King David to where he's praying that the Lord will deliver him from them. So who are these strange children? So Strange children is defined with a couple of different words. They are two different words. Um, so this first one, the strange, is nakar, and the uh, children is the ben, which I just brought up here just to show you it does mean like children, like people, not just a spirit, but, a, but people, like a physical person. And then here's the zur, which is another word for strange. So strange... Um, is defined in a couple of different ways, but foreign or strange, profane even. So what's this strange person that David's so afraid of? I'm going to give you a few more scriptures that I think help to, help to show us that there is a different group of people. So Joel 2, 1 through 11 Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. Where else do we see mighty men? It was those giants the men of renown. They shall climb the wall, the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on, his own, on, everyone on his ways. They shall not break the ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. So no friendly fire. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. 
The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is a strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. and Who can abide in it? So there's a lot to unpack there and we can't really go super deep because of the time. And there's a little bit more I still want to cover. But we'll go through the definition of great people. Um, but do those sound like just normal people? Sound like they've got some supernatural ability and that maybe that they're even mixed, that they've got some chimera action going on here, right? And who would the earth, because nobody's allowed to actually go to the Garden of Eden now, right? It's guarded by angels with a sword. So the land is as the Garden of Eden before them. It's as the Garden of Eden. It's not the Garden of Eden, but it's like it. And behind them, a desolate wilderness. So if, if you spent your entire life under the ground and then all of a sudden you were coming up, up onto the, the top ground where you can see the sun, you can see trees and grass and all kinds of stuff that's beautiful, it would be like Eden to you, right? So this could be pointing to these creatures that we've been, we have testimonies of people that say that they've seen them underground and that there are as an, an entire civilization like we know that it's not disputed that there are deep underground military bases but the extent is the official extent is not reported like we're told that they have like literally bases all over the place and highways that connect them and electric rails that they can go from maine to california in 15 minutes type of thing like they're apparently that connected and you've got truck drivers who testify that yes i go underground and make deliver you know, make deliveries so if you've lived your entire life underground and all of a sudden you come up and you see the sun and you're this pale thing right would the would the land be like garden of eden and would behind you feel like a desolate wilderness i believe so anyway they're not going to be wounded reg by a regular sword so again, you're going to need the anointing of the Most High to do anything against these things. And I've heard some speculation that these are actually good. Um, I don't know. When I read all of that, they don't sound good to me. That doesn't sound like... And so I th it, it can be interpreted to say that all of them are the Lord's army because it says, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. But that it's not necessary there. That's not... Exi it's not specified exactly that that's what that's saying it just says all this happened and then the lord shall utter his voice before his army so this could be two separate things like all this is happening and he's going and telling his army hey like get ready could also be an interpretation of that so i'm not going to stand strongly on that but something to pray about this could be pointing to the return of a great people And there's living man-like creatures in the sky. I might have failed to get to the definition on those things. Or they might be in a, in a slide or two. I don't know. Y'all, I need sleep. Y'all pray for me. I'm serious. Pray for me. I need help. I need, I need a breakthrough. I am, I, I am hurting. Y'all pray for your pastor. I hope y'all are praying for your pastor, right? Because there's like a, a strong right thinking that the pastor should be praying for you. And I do. I pray for everybody. But like, help me to help you, right? <laughs> you got to pray for me too because I need a breakthrough. And specifically, if you want to say, what can, we, what can we pray for you for? Most everybody here knows, I just, the biggest thing that I personally, that Pastor Jonathan needs, needs prayer on is some provision. I am, half of my week is lost to a minimum wage job just to try to cover bills. And we're further and further behind every 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 week and every month and i i, I didn't plan on on, <laughs> on saying any of this but you know um asking you shall receive right i'm not asking anybody here to give us any to give any more than you already are i am asking y'all to pray that the lord would would bring us four or five families that are willing to to really tithe to help because if I'm being fully transparent, I'm, I'm behind on my mortgage several months right now and my credit's maxed out. So um, I am praying that the Lord will, <laughs> will 
will deliver a way for, uh, I've just continued to pour it all out and to have faith and to trust. And then the thing is like, okay, well, to trust to what degree do you then um, quit your part-time job because you're really trusting them when I've been rebuked over not having a job? Okay, so I have a job now. So, but do I need a full-time job? Because y'all, it's, it's, it's all of the strength that I have and strength that I don't have to pull together what we have already with a part-time job. I literally, most Saturday nights, I get less than two hours of sleep. So I'm, I'm str- I don't exercise. I don't get sleep throughout the week. I don't have time to counsel people and really to do deliverance and to do any of the stuff that I need to do as a pastor. And so as like the wellness guy, I, my cups, are, the majority of my wellness cups are all dry. And I know nobody even knows what that means because nobody's read the book that I <laughs> was obedient to write. But my cups are dry and they need to be filled up. <laughs> So I trust that the Lord is good and he's going to provide. But y'all, I, um, I don't know, you know. I never wanted to be a pastor that was begging people for, for money and I'm not, I'm not saying we need a building fund and, you know, I need a new jet, any of that. I am just asking for y'all to pray that the Lord provide for us to be able to continue and for me to get some balance back because it's unhealthy. It is unhealthy and I'm willing to pour it all out, but there's only so long that I can sustain not sleeping and not exercising, and not eating properly. Um, So, you know, you have not because you ask not. I'm asking for prayer. And if there's anybody online that has a rich uncle that keeps saying, I wish I could find a desperate pastor that preaches about flat earth, (laughs) maybe give him, send him a link. I don't know. (laughs) You know? Um, But I need help because, yeah, I really, if I'm honest, I'm kind of like delirious standing here trying to deliver this to y'all because I'm exhausted. So please pray for me. I'm going to try to keep going. Um, Likeness. Here's the likeness. Resembling without being identical. So, you know, when we saw the the likeness of a man. Did I skip over this? I didn't even read this one. See, you see what I'm saying? Ezekiel 1, 4 through 12. This is a big one, y'all. We talk about aliens. Let's talk about aliens again. Living man-like creatures in the sky. Okay. I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire and out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So it didn't say it's a man. It says the likeness of a man. And I'll show you that definition. Everyone had four faces. Everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they had four. And they four had the faces in their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion in the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. That's an interesting creature. They thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of everyone were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. And they went everyone straight forward whither the spirit was to go. They went and they turned not when they went. Ezekiel 1, 4 through 12. And I'm gonna give, we're going to pick up with verse 13 in a second, but I wanted to show you the definition of likeness just so we can know what we're working with. It means resembling without being identical. So it's not a man, but it does have a resemblance of a man, right? Which many of those creatures that we've heard reported on and the one that I've seen, it has a resemblance of a man without actually being a man, right? All right, so let's pick it back up with verse 13 in Ezekiel 1. As for the likeness of the living creatures, because there's a couple, there's a several important pieces here. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces, the appearance of the wheels. What are these wheels? The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. And it's a pretty blue stone. And they four had one, ni- one likeness. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. 
Okay. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful. And their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. What's this sound like? It sounds like a, 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 a spinning flying salsa to me. The likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. And under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Everyone had two, which covered on this side, and everyone had two, which covered on that side, their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. So when I read that part, I heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters. That reminded me of what I heard with that spinning lasso thing that was hovering over my, my, my roof and then went, <laughs> it sounded like great waters. It sounds like they're talking about a flying saucer right there is what it sounds like to me. A wheel. And if you look up that definition, it's just, it's a wheel. <sighs> then I turned and lifted. So now we're moving to Zechariah 5 and we're, we're almost done. Last big one, I believe, is in Zechariah 5 here. So then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll and said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, this, what is this? The flying roll. This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off on, as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, what is it? And he said, this is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, and you know, Zechariah is a prophet, right? All of this is prophecy. This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I up mine eyes and looked and behold, there came out two women and the wind was in their wings for they had wings like the wings of a stork and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, whither, whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me to build it an house in the land of Shinar and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. So, couple of things that obviously stand out. The flying roll. I'm going to show you a picture of what that looks like. The ephah. I'm going to show you a picture of what that looks like. And I've showed you the picture before, but it looks like a flying saucer. But then <laughs> I like this, this part. It said, he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof of the ephah. You know what I picture? A bunch of rednecks with shotguns. <laughs> I'm about to cast some lead at this ephah. Right? And I'm going to be one of those rednecks. <laughs> uh, whatever I can get my hands on I'm sending it <laughs> right but they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven who these these <laughs> these spirits these these crazy women but the the thing I'm gonna that I, I really want to bring to this teaching that I think has been omitted from most of the teachings that I've ever seen on this is that whether do these bear the ephah and he said unto me to build it in house and the land of Shinar and what? It shall be established. That's the part that I think is missing from the very few 
teachings that you'll hear on this whole UFO phenomena. Because it seems like to me, and it might just be my, my perception, but it seems like the few voices that you'll hear that speak on this, it's like, the aliens show up, it's an epic battle, and things are over, and Jesus comes back immediately. As it was in the days of Noah, they were in charge. They were established. And I've had a dream, and it was like I was, I was up in, it seemed like, what did it seem like? Like a, a steak and shake type of spot. And Alessandra was with me. And in this dream, there was a young giant that was there. And people weren't freaked out that he was there. It was like normalized that they were part of society. And this dude was like nine feet tall. And in the dream, he was being super disrespectful. And so I stood up and started rebuking him in front of everybody for being disrespectful. And then I woke up. Like that was the extent. Now I've had another dream about a war. So I do think there is going to be some fighting that happens first. But I believe based on this that the ephah is going to build a house and it shall be established. And that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be. I believe there's going to be a period of time. And I don't know if it's a year or five years or 20 years. I don't know. Like as soon as. I can't even. What can I say? I have to edit so much out of my videos before I post them. I'll just say it and I'll edit it out. COVID. As soon as COVID happened and we see the world shutting down, I'm like, this could be the start of the seven year tribulation. And it could have been. It looked like we're a half a step away from the mark of the beast, right? But guess what has happened? Some time has gone by, right? So if 2020 was the kickoff of the seven-year tribulation, then halfway through that, we should have seen the mark of the beast implemented as mandatory. 2023 and a half has already passed. So the kickoff of the seven-year tribulation was not 2020, right? So it was a, a understandable speculation. But it's also possible that we might have some time once these things show up that they're in charge and running things and it becomes illegal to say that they weren't our planters or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But the word of God tells us that these ephahs come and build a house and it shall be established. So let's look at what that means real quick. I'm about to let y'all go. I think. But again, what do I know? I'm just here. To build. So the word to build The word to build can mean to build. It can also mean to rebuild, right? Because if they built a society before and they're being reintroduced, then whatever they build could be considered a rebuilding. You know what this word to build, this balna, can also mean to establish a family, okay? To obtain children. Interesting definition there. A little bit of definition time. But this house, they're building a house, a house, especially a family, a temple, a dwelling habitation, human bodies. So the, the ephah, so I'll show you a picture of the ephah, is coming to establish a family of bodies, which we saw that it was a likeness of a human, and it is a dwelling. Remember, our, our bodies, our physical bodies are considered dwellings. So they're coming to establish a people. And this Shinar, and the, they established the house in the land of Shinar. It's speculated that it is uh, in present day Iraq. So I don't know if that's true. You can also look at Babylonia, that this Shinar is a plane in Babylonia, you can consider Babylonia to be the beast system and that it could be the extent of the world government and that their establishment could be across the whole earth. You could, you could do that. Or if some aliens show up and they set up camp in Iraq, you'd be like, okay, <laughs> the land of Shinar. Because they could have a headquarters somewhere, right? This is our capital building. 
And after these things I saw, so this is Babylon, after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Revelation 18, one through four. And so we haven't gone through a strong, you know, uh, eschatology end times teaching here. And next week is not even going to be, you know, a thorough end times teaching it's really focused more on the destruction of the creation because this is just the creation series. So there's a whole lot more to unpacking like the sequence of events and all the players and all of the drama of the tribulation period and all of that. But we do believe strongly that this, uh, the whore of Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican. But Babylon can also be considered just a representation of the beast system um, so again, this Babylonia, this Babylon, what thing we do know is that it has become the habitation of devils. And those devils could just be spirits or they could be the return of the Nephilim as well. So there's always a couple of ways that you can look at this stuff. And there's no way to know for sure when you're talking about end time prophecy. Just kind of file this stuff away and remember when things start to pop off. <laughs> if they, they build them a headquarters in Iraq, you'd be like, and you can use that to show somebody in scripture. You can be like, Hey, look, here it is. Here it is. So here's the flying rolls. And, um, you know, this is what we saw in Scripture described. It just looks like a, roll, like a scroll that's rolled up. It looks like a tube. And these are some of the unidentified aerial phenomena that are reported. Sometimes they look like saucers. Sometimes they look like scrolls. Sometimes they look like inverted spinning golden lassos apparently you know I don't, they got a bunch of different craft but this is what was seen and so this you know the one on the left is a, a cgi the one on the right is an actual picture that was taken from somebody's backyard and that was in 2021 it's pretty recent here's the ifa here's what an ifa looks like this is what goes about over the whole earth between the earth and the heavens. And it's the curse that goes out upon the whole earth and establishes a house that shall be established, which is a people group, a family. Okay. So here's how we get victory over aliens. No fear. I ain't scared. You just don't be afraid because demons get strength and they feed off of fear and there's a demonic spirit that's inside of them even if there happens to be some physical bodies that show up okay so they will be emboldened just like a dog if you act afraid of them they're going to come bite you but if you stand your ground and you are assertive then uh you know you stand a much better chance break curses step forward with faith and courage fight and remove the head <laughs> where was that example Anybody remember it by now? Who did that? David. David. Excellent. Excellent. Good job. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthahi and David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith, I gave you this earlier, but we had to bring it back because how do we have victory over the aliens? We got to have faith who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. We can't do nothing on our own, y'all, but we got to have faith. Got to have faith in God. And then Joshua 1, 8 through 9. I'm loving that I'm including eight with it now. Can't separate them. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. 
Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. So obviously part of that is a choice. Part of the being strong and of good courage is when you're tempted to give in to fear, you speak words, I'm not afraid, I'm courageous. You break curses. You don't give agreement to spirits of fear. But you know what makes that a whole lot more easy? And you know what might be literally the only way that you can be strong and of good courage when the hearts of men are failing them? The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So I hope you all are reading your Bible every single day as much as you can. As much as you can. Because what's coming is about to be worse than the world has ever seen. All right, y'all. So that's my little teaching on the aliens. And we could have gone longer, obviously, but, you know, it's long enough, isn't it? (laughs) All of a sudden we, amen. (laughs) You don't have to amen that. (laughs) Um, So let's pray, and then we are going to worship. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day and for this teaching and um, for your holy word. And Lord, we just pray whatever comes in the days ahead, Lord, that that we will we will be found faithful, Lord, that we'll keep our faith in you, that we'll trust that you are good and that you are sovereign, that you are on your throne and that everything is being allowed, that it's gone through your hand and it's being allowed as part of your sifting and sorting process, Lord. So, We thank you. We thank you for calling us. We thank you for choosing us. And we thank you for um, just the faith that you've given us. We pray, Lord, that you would increase the gift of faith. We pray, Lord, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, for anybody that would ask for it, Lord, that a supernatural faith would begin to operate. We pray for it even more so, Lord, as these days get darker. Lord, protect us from aliens and demons and lying humans witches and warlocks and chimera and wild beasts lord protect us from evil deliver us from evil help us to stand firm lord call to us in deep places and call to us on a daily basis to pray to fast to go into supplication for others lord to intercede for others to to seek you to seek a relationship with you through your word to seek uh, just continued baptism of the Holy Ghost. Help us to be obedient to you. Help us to worship you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for your good creation. All of it. All of it, Lord. For all of the ups and downs, all of the challenges opportunities to overcome, opportunities to demonstrate faith, to grow closer to you through faith. I thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Lord, help us to always remember that, in a sense, it's a love letter, that we are your bride. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. to make a way for us to be together. And I thank you, Lord, that one day we'll look back on this short amount of time and we'll just glorify you even more for for all of the challenges and even all this crazy stuff that's going to come on to the world soon. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you that you are good and we thank you that you are just. We thank you that you are righteous. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to judge the wicked So, Lord, give us great courage to stand in these last days. Help us to bring your name fame. Please be with us and protect us this week. Let's deliver us from evil. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. Stay well and be breast. (laughs) Breast. (laughs) Don't be breast. Be blessed. (laughs) In Jesus' name. Amen. (laughs)